But Jason, we need fat in our diet. Why are you consuming some of these fat-free products? I don't understand. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I'm gonna answer um, you know, a question I get a lot of times when I post stuff like uh, fat-free dairy, uh, refried beans with no fat added, uh, things like that. People always ask these questions and it's always puzzling to me and I think there's some points that people miss when we say things like we need fat in our diet. What they're not understanding is, yes, we do need fat in our diet. There are a couple of fats that are absolutely essential for health. They're essential for life. They're essential for cell function. But what people don't understand, they're taking the whole category of fat and thinking that it means all fats. Okay. Does that make sense? It's almost like saying we need some amino acids in our diet. So I'm going to go consume 100 grams of a non-essential amino acid. Well, no, you technically only need the essential ones, but uh, obviously all our complete proteins have all 20. Okay, does that make sense? Um, so it's not exactly how this that works, but I think people can, can at least relate to that. So when this comes up, uh, you know, people don't seem to realize there are multiple types of every every type of fat. Okay, it's not like saturated fat is just one thing, for example. And saturated fat is not essential. There are over a dozen different uh, types of saturated fat. Okay, they're all different variations. So you have your polyunsaturated, your monounsaturated, your saturated. All right, your polyunsaturated include your, that's where your essential ones are. Uh, and again, there's multiple types of each of those. Right, we've got... Uh, EPA, DHA, ALA, all those things just as omega-3. Your body can convert ALA into the other two. Uh, but what people need to grasp is when we say we need fats to survive, it is specifically polyunsaturated fats. In other words, we don't actually have any dietary need whatsoever for the other types. In fact, saturated fat, the human body is quite capable of making it. So here, here and lay the issue. If a person is pursuing other macronutrients for their benefits, like, so let's say, uh, for example, uh, and I'm in a calorie deficit and I'm cutting right now, okay? My calories kind of matter. The source of my calories matters. Uh, all the other nutrients involved in those calories matter. And when push comes to shove, carbohydrates are a superior fuel source for an athlete to dietary fat. Uh, particularly given that 100% of my training is anaerobic. All of my training, look at all my training, it's all weightlifting. Even any conditioning I do is, is going to be resistance-based. It burns purely glucose. There is no fat burn involved. Okay. Fat doesn't generally have much in the way of anabolic properties. Carbohydrates do. So in my case, I'm trying to get a lot of carbohydrate calories. So, you know, people say, well, why can't you drink... This, why don't you do this whole milk? Why don't you get all this saturated fat? And I'm like, because from a anabolic perspective, saturated fat's like the worst thing I could possibly be eating. And I need my calories to count. So using, using me as an example there, that's something to think about. So why wouldn't I, why would I want to cut a bunch of saturated fat out of my protein sources? So I can replace it with carbohydrates and I can replace it with carbohydrates that are rich in other nutrients I need. Uh, most of your saturated fat sources, nutrient per nutrient, they're actually pretty poor quality in terms of what you're getting out of them. All they bring to the table is extra calories. And it's a type of calorie that can reduce insulin sensitivity. Okay, saturated fat is absolutely linked with insulin resistance. It's not my preferred fuel source. It's just not. So why, why wouldn't I do that? So then people say, but, but we need that. But, but there is no, no dietary need for, a, for saturated fat. Again, it would be impossible to eat zero of it. So let's get that out of the way. But your body does not have to consume technically a single gram of saturated fat to maximize health, uh, even to maximize hormone function. You do not have to, you do not technically have to consume any. So when that comes up, it's like, so why are you guys talking about that? When we say we need fat, you need to understand what fats we need. 
And then we get into the question of how much. Well, we don't have good data on how much, but we know it's relatively low. I mean, there's a lot of figures and, and recommendations of, hey, you know, you need whatever, two grams of omega-3 and like whatever, the six grams of omega-6 for optimal health. Um, but we don't have a lot of data to support those numbers. They're, they're assumptions. And ultimately, here's the, the problem with even making those assumptions. There have been cultures and societies that get such trace amounts of fat, like the Okinawans. I mean, that throws a, uh, you know, big wrench in things. Because everyone says, oh, we're talking about blue zones. I'm not talking about blue zones. I'm specifically talking about a culture that we have studied for its absurdly long lifespan. Okay, They're, they have the longest lifespan of any subculture that we've studied. And we know a lot about their diet. It's been studied extensively. Their diet is ultra low fat. It's 6% fat. 6% of their calories coming from fat. But their fat sources tend to be rich in polyunsaturated fats. Okay? Eating a lot of seaweed, a little bit of fish, stuff like that. Sweet potatoes. <clears throat> so you look at that and go, so, well, there's where your needs are. Your dietary needs for that. And we absolutely have to have fat to survive. And it, and it appears if we go off the numbers we have, it appears to be about 8 grams a day. That's the fat that you need. But it's not, it's not just random 8 grams. It, you're, you're not going to get that from your, your milk or, or your steak most likely. Or you could, but you need a lot of it. Um, but that's, that is rather the point. Yes, we need fat. But it's specific fats, so that's the problem. Everyone brings it up, well, you need to fatten your diet. I'm like, well, why don't I just get the fats that I need from those sources and then not waste a bunch of my calories as an athlete on an inferior fat source that's not helping me in any way. There's no benefit whatsoever to me consuming it. In fact, it's, it's, it's a lot of calories that I could be using for other stuff that fill me up better that feel my training better, that feel my muscle growth better, right? So, and that applies to all of you out there. So, so understand what you're doing. And people like to throw phrases out there like, you need this new diet, but, but what you're describing isn't what you need. You're taking a whole vague category and saying you need this and then assuming it applies to anything similar, you know? <laughs> It would be on par with saying, uh, well, we need red pigment in our foods, so I'm going to go eat a bunch of purple because there's some red in there. You know, I don't know. Maybe that's not the best analogy. I, I don't like these analogies. Maybe let's drop analogies and just go with what we know. The fats you guys are describing are not the ones that you need in your diet. You're just adding random fats in because you heard somewhere that you need fat in your diet instead of looking into what that actually means. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.